Hi. Hey, kia ora koutou. Uh, ko Trisha Aho. Um, I'm a transgender ally and my pronouns are she, her. I'm a nurse educator. Kia ora. My name is Mel Mates. I am a transgender non-binary. My pronouns are they, them. And I am a third year nursing student. We're going to present today on a project that initially sought to enhance nursing students' competences with regards to transgender healthcare. This project uses an action research methodology. Action research um, involves cycles of understanding and planning action, action, evaluation of those action, and replanning in light of those evaluations. The group initially was a group of 12, four nurse educators, two um, student support team members, and six community members, four of whom were transgender, and including one nurse, nursing student, transgender nursing student. I had initially focused on trying to get content into our nurse education program, but the nature of action research is such that the group determines the direction. As it was, we ended up moving out to, to a concern for educating the educators and out further to increasing inclusivity across the whole organization and beyond. Um, I initially focus on nurses because um, I, I see that nurses are often the first point of contact, contact for a patient entering a healthcare setting. Nurses often are the ones that have the most time with their patients. They're often the ones that provide the personal cares for a patient. Nurses can be advocates for their patients and can be advocates for change within an organisation. Within New Zealand, nurses are our biggest health workforce by far. However, there is a current invisibility within nursing literature and nursing curricula in New Zealand and internationally. Through the program, um, we began by putting content into the nurse education program. One of the things we did was develop a workshop um, class session for our year one students. This was developed as a group and um, ended up um, being a a whole session within a communication paper, a three hour session with pre and post activities. We also had some inclusion within our year one um, health science paper. In our year two clinical skills paper, we, um, we put some content into the uh, catheterization session, and we also developed a profile um, of a transgender patient that could be used for um, practicing history taking. Um, we're still working on that profile. We also amended our health history taking form, which initially asked for gender, male or female, to gender free response. Within that, we also um, added a statement of how would you like to be addressed? which that statement, how would you like to be addressed, uh, works for everybody, it works for transgender people. Uh, it, it opens up communication to for people to state their pronouns if they wish to, uh, but for general people, uh, for example, Margaret Smith might say, Mrs. Smith is how she'd like to be preferred, or Margaret or Maggie, so it works for everybody. Also in year two, we do the mental health paper and sitting in class, um, particularly during the class on suicide risk, there was no mention of transgender people, let alone uh, any rainbow people whatsoever throughout the whole paper. So I emailed my tutor uh, to bring this to his attention and to bring his attention to the available New Zealand uh, resources, such as uh, the Youth 12, which was the one available at the time, uh, Counting Ourselves and Rainbow Mental Health Resource, uh, and he did do a resource page with a rainbow resource page with those links. But in fairness, only people who are interested are going to look at them. So we talked about it in our action working group and uh, Trish and other staff uh, spoke with the, the, the teacher. And um, initially we heard that there wasn't going to be content delivered in class, but uh, I'm happy to say that now there is content delivered in class on uh, transgender people and uh, rainbow people generally um, and risk to look for minority stress and um, things like that. And the year three primary health care paper, we have one class which is titled Sexual and Gender Diverse Health and we cover all the STIs, 
and did, we did cover uh, barriers for rainbow people that they might have in seeking sexual health care. Um, we looked at false perception risks and risks for gay and bisexual women and risks for men who have sex with men. However, we did run out of time for the video on um, gender diversity. Uh, so it is up to individual lecturers and time restraints as to uh, what is covered in class, even if the content is in the paper, uh, uh, people can choose to gloss over it or, um, or run out of time because they don't see that one as, as, as an important or, or maybe it's just a time restraint full stop. So there still can be barriers even when uh, content is there. Now, international students, we have nurses come from other countries who nurses in their country of origin. And depending on what country they come from, how well their education, nursing education aligns with New Zealand nursing education as to how much study um, they might have to do. So in my year two, we had 20 odd uh, international students start. So they missed that year one workshop on gender diversity and also these uh, international students could come from countries where it is still illegal or maybe only even recently legal to be homosexual. Some countries it is still punishable by death to be homosexual, let alone talking about any transgender issues. So we identified a need for sort of basic rainbow education for our international students um, that, uh, that may need to have an adjustment into New Zealand culture in regards to our rainbow community. And um, ahead of year two said, yep, that's possible. We've got room in our orientation week. And then we sort of expanded to student success and spoke with them and they were interested in perhaps having that in orientation for all international students, which um, to help them acclimatize to culture in New Zealand. Uh, COVID sort of put a kibosh on that with the, the borders being closed. So that's on the back burner. But it also highlighted the need then that uh, nurse educators need uh, training in some rainbow things as to be trainers. So that moved us on to developing our uh, rainbow diversity workshop. Over to you, Trish. So, yes, yeah, so the, the fact that nurse, you know, we needed nurse educators to be on board and the identified need that we um, needed to look at our international students and student success wanting to be part of that caused us to develop um, a workshop called Gender and Sexual Minorities at Work. This was developed from a workshop initially developed by um, Mid Central DHB and we adapted it for the organization with permission from those from Emmett and Secret. I have to be I'm very grateful for their support on this, who were group members who um, allowed us to use that workshop and trained members of the group in the delivery of that workshop. Alongside that, we also developed a resource site, an online resource site with resources for our healthcare educators with, re with regards to uh, information about transgender healthcare. The group then considered the importance of an inclusive wider organization so that we got more um, transgender students in and, and subsequently more transgender nursing students. So with that in mind, we expanded the resource site out to the whole organization and included resources related to um, creating supportive and um, trans inclusive classrooms. We also expanded the workshop out to the wider organization and got funding from the organization for two of these workshops a year. Um, so um, we are currently delivering those at the organization. Mel. Yes, and another thing, um, I had previously complained about the enrollment form that wasn't very um, culturally safe. It was asking for legal gender and preferred gender. And at that time I was working with management to get gender neutral put onto the disability toilets, being that they were the only gender neutral um, facilities for non-binary people like myself. Uh, so sort of um, I followed up uh, about a year later on on those enrollment forms and saw that they were still the same so I brought it to the action working group and Trish and other staff members in the action working group were able to get that changed uh, which is really good so that was another thing the group was able to do and uh, the group was also able to get um, some limited funding for to celebrate Pride Day because in our institution we have particular days that are celebrated, they're advertised and there's uh, 
some, something going on um, during the day. So for next year for International Pride Day, we will be um, celebrating Pride Day at all of our campuses, which is great. And that brings me on to the Nursing Council of Competencies. Uh, every year of my nursing degree, I've written to the Nursing Council to say I'm trans non-binary, year one, year two, year three, nursing student, and to ask them about if they could add gender identity into their publications. Um, because although all nurses in New Zealand are supposed to be uh, culturally safe for trans people, we know that's not unfortunately always the case. And this year I uh, sort of honed in on competency 1.5, which is practicing nursing in a manner that the health consumer determines as being culturally safe. And it has seven indicators with one of them being reflects on his or her own practice and values that impact on nursing care in relation to health consumers, age, ethnicity, culture, beliefs, gender, sexual orientation and or disability. I had a much better response this year as the competencies are being reviewed and they said they would let me know when they're seeking community uh, feedback and that they were going to pass on to their policy team the um, links that I that I gave to Youth 19 Counting Ourselves and the prison report and um, I've discussed my emails with Trish for the last couple of years and, and Trish uh, suggested that uh, perhaps I could offer the nursing council for herself and myself to do the rainbow diversity training for them um, free of charge and they are taking us up on that and uh, we would have done it by now but sort of COVID has forced us to reschedule for the beginning of November and we are due to do that in the morning and in the afternoon to get as many nursing council staff as possible and you know it feels like a real privilege and a massive opportunity um, to get in front of the nursing council uh, and we're both very excited about that. And moving on, heading towards conclusion. So this uh, resource is from the Council of Trade Unions at Work and the Action Working Group moved beyond basic transgender education to full rainbow education, working to move people away from these negative attitudes to the positive ones. And as an individual who's uh, been an active member of the rainbow community since a teenager, as uh, I, I lived as a gay woman for most of my adult life before coming out trans non-binary um, less than five years ago. And it's those ex experiencing those negative attitudes that qualifies me to be a rainbow diversity trainer. Um, the lovely unexpected bonus of being part of the action working group is that for the first time in my life as a, a rainbow person, I find myself experiencing the positive attitude of nurturance and experiencing opportunities such as co-presenting this presentation and some opportunities for advancement rather than indifference, discrimination bias and unconscious bias that I have encountered in the past. So in conclusion, the rippling effect grows as it has here, starting with one nurse educator with a research question, developing an action working group to introduce trans education for nursing students, uh, rainbow diversity training being developed with the help from our local mid central DHB diversity trainers for education, for educating the educators to educate the international students, uh, and then expanding out to general. Um, uh, staff at our learning institution and uh, an empowered, stubborn individual pers persevering with emailing the nursing council, uh, leading to trans nursing student and cis ally nurse educator to deliver rainbow diversity training to the nursing council, the, who are the very people who can ensure that trans education uh, could be mandatory uh, throughout New Zealand and that all nurses in New Zealand act, practice and in an, in are account, accountable to practice in a safe and competent way for all trans people in New Zealand. Thank you very much. And to conclude from me, I would just like to say that with regards to transgender healthcare, it is important that we consider our, our nurses. And I would also like to say that action research has, has proven to be an inclusive and transformative um, approach to research. I'd like to thank you all 
for listening today. And I'd really like to thank members of the Action Research Group that have worked so hard to bring about such change. Thank you very much.